Today, we have a mission to create a samurai burger based on what samurais eat. Why? Blame McDonald's for coming up with beef burgers and slapping the name samurai burger on it. It's not just Singapore's McDonald's, but also Japan's McDonald's with samurai burger. The main problem with having beef or chicken in a burger called the samurai burger is that samurais, or almost all Japanese when samurai existed, were pescatarians, meaning they only ate fish and vegetables. Most Japanese in these periods practiced Buddhism or Shinto. Anything meat was considered unclean. Those who ate meat typically did so for medical reasons. So can r slash Singapore tell me why my Hainanese chicken ramen with the flavours of Hainanese chicken rice is considered heresy? Yet McDonald's Samurai Burger with none of the flavours of what a samurai ate is considered actual nirvana and continues to be hyped up every year. What samurai really ate heavily depends on the time period and how high ranking a samurai was. Like in this book, The Hundred Rules of War, which is supposedly written by Sukahara Bokuden, a famous samurai in the early Sengoku period. A rule states, if a samurai is preparing to step onto the field of battle, it is wise to avoid eating anything other than hot water poured over rice. Huh. Okay, here's our samurai burger, and we're done. Remember to like and subscribe, bye. All jokes aside, nearing the end of the Sengoku period, the memoirs of the daughter of a samurai retainer of Ishida Mitsunari ate porridge of grain crops for breakfast and supper. Only two meals were eaten every day, with lunch being a luxury reserved for the days when her brothers went hunting in the mountains. Nameshi, or rice cooked with plant leaves and stems, would be prepared in this case. With the rise of the warrior class starting from the Muromachi period, samurai who were high ranked would also eat honzen ryori, which is a highly ritualized form of serving food. This starts with the Shikisan Kon, where guests are served three servings of sake with food as a ceremonial contract with the divine. After the Shikisan Kon, the meal served is based on how rich a samurai was, with the most basic version being Ichijiu Sansai, meaning one soup and three dishes. Sansai would include a namasu, which is fish sliced thinly, sometimes served with vegetables marinated in vinegar. In modern day, namasu can also refer to just the vegetables. Sansai also includes the hira, or simmered dish, and then a yakimono, or grilled dish. All of these must be placed in a very specific position depicted in this diagram. Tsukemono, or pickled dish, and rice are not included in the number of dishes. And the most luxurious version of Honzen Ryori would have Sanju Shichisai, or three soups and seven dishes. Though Honzen Ryori had already fallen out of practice after World War II, which is probably why the only picture I was able to find following this format is this very low res picture. A descendant of the chef of the Maeda Samura clan also talks about a similar banquet called the Kyo. -o. I wasn't able to find out more about the minute differences, or maybe they are the same thing, but high end samurai cuisine like this continued forward to the Edo period. With the long 200 years of peace and stability the Edo period was able to enjoy, Japanese culture was able to flourish and form the basis of today's modern Japanese culture. Without battles to fight, the samurai became more like bureaucrats and scholars. Remnants from these luxurious meals can be found even in modern Japanese meals, which generally follow the configuration of Ichijiu Sansai. On a more daily basis, samurai nobility in the Genroku era often had meals consisting of dried strips of daikon, arame kelp, umeboshi, Tofu, konyaku, yams, boiled burdock root, marinated freshwater clams, broiled striped nullet, and pickles. Miso soup with dried daikon radish and sake were also served. The city of Edo, which is the former name of Tokyo, was a relatively good place at the time for foodies compared to other cities in Japan. Breakfast for the common folk included rice, soup, pickles, one or two dishes of either dried fish, boiled dried daikon radish strips, deep fried tofu with kelp, fried burdock roots, boiled beans, or clear tofu soup. Tofu was particularly popular, as a recipe book called the Tofu Hyakujin, with 100 tofu recipes was a bestseller that even got two sequels. In the streets, you can find soba noodles, sushi, tempura, and unagi just about every corner in Edo. Main and side dishes were not only cooked at home, but also purchased from shops. Though, what you ate still depended on how rich you were. A low-ranking samurai who just had his stipend reduced to a fifth of the previous year, wrote about his experiences in the Sekijo Niki starting in June 1861. He mentioned that family meals were soup, pickles, and rice with green tea poured over it. Sometimes tofu or white vegetables were added, but egg or fish were luxurious. And with all this in mind, we have a lot of options if we were to make a samurai burger. You know, except for beef, chicken, mayonnaise, and bread, which McDonald's specifically chose, and is also not to be found in anything I have said thus far. Great job, McDonald's! Starting with the buns, we're going with rice again. It was more common in Edo to eat white rice instead of unpolished rice compared to the other regions. Though, rice polishing techniques weren't able to remove as much of the outer layers of rice as modern techniques can. 
so they were a bit more yellowish back then. Rice was very typically mixed together with other ingredients like barley, daikon or any kind of vegetables, also called katen meshi. Nowadays we do this because it looks good for the gram, but back then this was because rice was still expensive especially for peasants. People preferred white rice, and those in Edo were able to swap from the original diet of unpolished rice and katen meshi. This actually resulted in a unique problem because white rice wasn't as nutritious as the original diet. A sickness called beriberi dubbed the Edo sickness. Click Japan and was especially prevalent in Edo. If you want to find out how they solved this problem, be sure to check out this video. But for our burger, we are going to make daikon rice. In a 1773 book, there is a description for the rice cooked in grated daikon juice mixed in with daikon cooked in cape jasmine juice. I can't find an exact recipe so we're going to do a simple version. Just chop the daikon into small cubes, put this with rice and a little bit of salt and cook. The top parts of the daikon are edible and add some colour, so we're gonna add this to the cooker just 5 minutes before the rice is done. When the rice is done and cool enough to handle, chip them using red hands. And we have rice buns. For the patty, there's a pot roasted yellow tail recipe from when the 8th shogun Yoshimune changed, replicated by this show, so we have an actual recipe to follow. This recipe is quite similar to teriyaki, though one thing you might notice is that the oil for frying is sesame oil. Nowadays, sesame oil refers to roasted sesame oil, which has a much darker colour and isn't really good for frying. But the sesame oil in Edo refers to light sesame oil, which has a high smoke point unlike the roasted version. In fact, sesame oil was commonly used back then for tempura. Sadly for the fish, I'm a mere peasant and have to cut half the fish budget. The recipe calls for the fattiest yellow tail but I'll be using tuna instead, which is historically accurate for the lower ranks since tuna was considered inferior to other fishes back then. Sesame oil in a pan, tuna in, and pieces of green onion. I shredded some of them to put in a burger. When one side is browned, flip, add in 80ml of sake, 3 tablespoons of osukuchi soy sauce, and sugar to taste. Let this cook for a couple of minutes, out with the tuna, then simply let the remaining sauce reduce until just the glaze. I also made a simple miso soup with daikon and leftover dashi, then added a little miso. Shredded some cucumbers for garnish, then mixed the green onion, some shredded cucumber and takuan. Takuan was especially popular in Edo since rice bran from polishing rice was used to pickle and make it. A relatively simple burger this time, with a side of shredded cucumber, umeboshi, and takua. Miso soup, and the burger. And this is why they made sushi instead of rice burgers back then. Sprinkle the sauce and then proceed to eat this like normal rice. I have to report that using expensive fish for this is a bit of a waste, especially since what I used was quite nice for sashimi. But overall, the burger I made wasn't particularly tasty, nor did it taste bad. Some were considered eating to be a form of ritual, and even meals eaten by the shogun was said to not taste good, despite being very aesthetically pleasing. So I guess this is kind of a success. Some people seem to be interested in the cost for the recipe, so here it is. Pause if you have to. But as I said, this recipe didn't exactly taste good. My channel was really meant more to be a food history channel, but I just baked people in with food. All this brings the cost for two portions to be 18 Singaporean dollars and 67 cents, assuming the remaining ingredients can be utilized for other purposes. So for example, I really only used about 50 cents worth of sesame oil, but $7.80 spent to buy a small bottle is still $7.80 spent, and sesame oil isn't really an ingredient I would normally buy. Taking this into consideration, and then adding these Japanese plates, the real cost of making this video is $44.67. You might also have noticed that today's episode doesn't have footage of McDonald's burger. And that's because money from that can be used to buy 3 servings of Taipo to fever the human. Money aside, the biggest cost for producing this video is time. 9th to 11th December is spent researching and reading up on the samurai, 12th December afternoon to buy groceries, 13th December afternoon to film, and 14th to 18th December spent on editing and some additional research. This schedule is done on a full-time basis and sadly, this is just how much videos like this are required to make. For comparison, Genshin recipe videos don't have as much history and can be pumped out a lot sooner. Even bigger set is that currently, this brings me a revenue of exactly $0, while probably netting McDonald's a few hundred bucks from the free advertisement. 
Basically, this is the longest and most roundabout way possible to say, please like and subscribe. Links to pages I found useful for this video will be provided as usual. There might be some historical inaccuracies or simplification, but the links are there for a reason.